to my channel. I'm Sonia. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. If you're returning, um, I do apologize that I didn't get to get this video out. This is the story of my father. I was trying to get this video out for Father's Day, but I just had too many other things going on. So I am going to drop a video midweek just to kind of catch up because I do want to move along and get to something else. And that kind of happened to me recently. But until then, um, this video and the story time is about um, my biological father and our relationship. Now, I've been wanting to tell this story for many, many years. Um, but I just never really got the opportunity to. I did get the opportunity to talk to my father um, before he passed away. And he passed away February 24th in 2020 so he passed away last february and like i said i did get to talk to him and i did get to tell him how i felt and express to him the things that have been going on through me throughout the years we're going to go ahead and code name him throughout the um throughout the segment and this will be a one part segment but we're going to go ahead and code name him um, Jose, because I didn't really think of another name. So here's the story of my father. My parents were married in high school. They had been dating for years. They knew each other in middle school. And I think they started dating in like eighth grade. My mother got pregnant with me when she was 17 and um, she ended up dropping out of school and my dad ended up dropping out as well. And they ended up getting married. They were married for about three years and then they separated when I was two. My mother really didn't like give a whole lot of detail of why she got divorced. She did express through many, many years that she did not like my father. And my father expressed for many, many years that he did not like my mother. And so they had a very, from my understanding, toxic relationship. He was mean to her and did a lot of crazy stuff to her but from my understanding she did a lot of crazy stuff too so but the segment is not about their relationship the segment is about him and what i went through with him they had a very ugly custody battle and i didn't know these things until i became older so just getting pieces of what family members have told me my mother my dad um, I just kind of put the pieces together and some of my aunts later on explained stuff to me when I got older, but they had a, my father didn't want custody of me. Um, he, he didn't want to fight for me and my grandparents are the ones who stepped in, his parents and stepped in and said, Hey, you're going to fight for her. And they actually ended up taking my mom to court and trying to get custody. And they didn't win, but they did get one of his weekends um, because grandparents don't really have rights. Um, but they did get one of his weekends. And I vaguely remember as a little girl going to court. I remember telling my mom, I remember them putting me in a room and they were speaking Somebody was speaking to me with my grandparents alone and then my mother would come in and then somebody would be speaking to me with my mother in the room and I remember playing with toys and she said, yeah, I, you know, I can't believe you remember that, but I think I was like four or five and she said that they were, I guess, observing how I interacted with the grandparents and the mother because um, the grandparents were trying to say that my mother was unfit and et cetera. So they had a lot of drama and problems um, within both of the families, just them not liking each other. My, my family did not like my mother. My mother did not like my family. And I heard about it for years, for years and years and years. And I really wish I hadn't heard about it just because it plays a toll on you as a child. And I didn't really realize that it did play a toll until I got older that, you know, it's 
it's just not good because I ended up feeling like it was something that I did or something that I wasn't doing. And I, again, I just really wish they would have just kept their problems to themselves and not involved me as a child. But yeah, so that's kind of what I had to hear. I don't know how far back some people can remember in their lives, but all I remember growing up when I was a little girl was that I always went to my grandparents. I was always at my grandparents' house and I was always with my grandparents. My aunts and uncles would come by and they would pick me up and they would take me to their houses and I would spend the night. And I was the oldest grandchild in the family. So I really didn't have a lot of cousins my age. A lot of my cousins now are very fortunate because a lot of them are the same age and they actually are super close and like best friends. And there's a big clump of them. Uh, all together and so they're very fortunate for that i wish i had that because i didn't at the time i was the oldest and the second to the oldest he i don't know how many years younger he is to me i think he's maybe five maybe i don't know i just know that he's he's he is the closest in age maybe he's about three maybe he's three maybe but other than that, all my other cousins are a lot more younger than me. So there was a big age gap between me as being the oldest and my cousins. So I really didn't have a whole lot of family to hang out with. I just hung out with that one cousin. And then um, I hung out with my aunts and my uncles. You know, they did for me and stuff. But my family was a good family. I have nothing bad to say about them. As a family, they are still that way to this day. They are very tight, very close-knit family. I know they talk to each other like every day. They're involved with each other's kids and lives. And they're the tightest family I've ever seen. Now, again, I, I went to my grandparents' house and my father, even though I was doing all of these things with my grandparents and my cousin and my my aunt and my uncle, my father never hardly came around to see me. He knew I was there and he never really tried to spend time with me. At one point he had got remarried and she persuaded him to, to try to see me, but it, and he, and he did try to spend time with me, but my father was also an alcoholic and he was also a drug addict and he was also a drug dealer and I knew all these things because he was very open about it so that's not something you really want around your child and he didn't really care to try to do stuff with me again it was more of the the new wife who persuaded him to come and you know pick me up and then she was the one who was spending time with me she was the one who was buying me clothes she was the one that did everything with me I actually still talk to her to this day and she's an amazing person they end up getting divorced and back to you know me not existing it was now I mean he would say hello in passing sometimes you know he would sit and chat but for the most part it's like I didn't even exist Imagine what that does to a child growing up. You know, I remember going home crying after a few years because I would think like, why doesn't my father love me? Why doesn't my father want to spend time with me? He knows that I'm here. He knows that I'm, you know, here for the weekend to spend time with him. And yet he sometimes would never even come by. And if he did come by a few times, he would just come in, walk in the door, say hey and leave and my grandparents would just make excuses like oh well, he's busy or oh he has something going on oh he has to work but as a little girl she doesn't want to hear that i want to hear that my dad loved me i wanted my dad to take me out to dinner and to the movies i wanted him to spend time with me and he didn't do that i would go through a phase where i would go to my mother's and i would just cry cry and just say I don't understand what I did wrong and I felt like I was doing something wrong because my father didn't love me in my I remember my mother of course my mother would say things about him but at the same time she would say these are things you need to ask you when you get older you're going to 
get older one day and be the thing you need to talk to him about. So it went on like that for a long time. What I also never expressed to my family was that he was he was embar he was an embarrassment. I had to go to you know, every year my family, my grandparents would throw this huge, you know, Christmas Eve shindig. You know, they were always having as the entire family come over and they've been doing it for as long as I as I could remember. And so everybody would come over on Christmas Eve and we'd all get together and they would bring presents and my grandparents would have presents and we'd eat and we'd, we'd open presents late at night and my grandfather would come out there with his big ass video recorder like he always did, shining the light in everybody's face and we would all open presents and it was a big deal. Um, sometimes we would do it where I would go first and then the next, you know, second to the oldest would go first and da 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 da. Um, I think now they do it where just everybody does it. So, I mean, it was, again, it's a tradition that went on for years and years and years, even when my kids were born, that it kept going on for years. I had to go to these things. This is just one example. But I had to go to these things. I had to go to this family get together and sit with my cousins who had their perfectly normal moms and dads who were still together, who showed love and affection towards their children and who in return showed love and affection for their parents. I was the one that didn't have that. And then when my father would show up, he was an embarrassment. He would get drunk. And I remember one time he fell through my mother, my grandmother's shed outside. And I remember one time he got into a physical altercation with my grandpa in the kitchen. And I remember he threw up on himself and peed on himself and did other stuff. Do you know how that makes you feel as a child who for one can't understand why this person doesn't show you the love and affection that I see with my other cousins and I see with my aunts and uncle and you don't have that. You have this drunken embarrassment of a family member who is your biological father. It was embarrassing. I do have brothers on my uh, dad's side of the family. I have four, four biological brothers. Um, I am again, the oldest child. So I have two that I'm very, very close with, um, but I have two twin brothers who are like, I think 16 now, and I don't really know them that well. They, they're 16, I'm 37, I'm about to be 37. So that's a big age difference, almost 20 years. But I grew up with my two, my two other brothers and they harbored for years feelings about him because of how he was. He was shitty to them too. He wasn't just shitty to me. He was shitty to them too. And I felt for them. I remember I, even to this day, I tried to stay in contact with them. I tried to show them that I love them. I tried to show them that I'm still here. We, we share something. We share a bond with somebody, unfortunately, who wasn't a great role model in our lives. And we went through the same emotions. I understand their emotions fully, but I tried to show them that I was still their sister and I still love them. And I really, I know that they know that. And we're still in touch to this day, of course, but it was hard for me to see him treat them that way. It was so hard and the hurt and the disappointment and the, the embarrassment, it all started to turn into anger. I started to hate this person. I started to just not even want to be around him. Now he did end up getting remarried again for the third time. And she had two daughters that were my age. So I had two stepsisters for a while. 
I would admit I did like having the two stepsisters and as a teenager I started to go over to his house more because at least I had somebody to talk to again I didn't have cousins that were really close in age with me my my aunts and my uncle I mean they were there to spend time with me but they also still had their own families so it wasn't really their obligation to entertain me I guess while I was there so I I was really I felt very alone so having stepsisters was was really cool for me like I I actually was okay and I got along with them very well I will admit and I don't think I ever told them this but I did hold envy in my heart towards them and even and I did know it wasn't their fault but I did because I was going to their home and they were showing me things and my father was buying but yet my father couldn't even give me $20 to or buy me anything it was disappointing it was disappointing and again I I went from hurt to anger I remember the first time I ever ran away. I was at his house. My mother was going through something at the time with her third husband and she sent me to go live with my father. And I remember I was so angry. I was so upset because I did not want to be there because I did not like being around Jose. And I even got to the point where I would call him by his name. I didn't even call him dad. I called him by his name. So she sends me over there and I'm very upset and I'm mad and I'm my world is just being turned upside down and you're handing me to somebody who doesn't even want me. So I ended up running away. And when they found me a few days later at one of my cousin's friend's house, um, and she wasn't my cousin on my dad's side, she was my cousin on my mom's side. When she when they found me, I remember I told my mom, I don't want to go back. Don't send me back there. And she didn't. He wasn't an all bad person. I know that I have a lot of my traits, a lot of traits of myself that come from him because I watched him through years and years. I've watched him growing up. He is this sarcastic, blunt, outgoing, crazy spontaneous person who has no filter and he's actually a lot of fun to be around when he's sober and that's me <laughs> I know that I get a lot of that from him um now my attitude in my mouth comes from my mom both of them are crazy and both of them are stubborn if you ask me but I do see a lot of me in him when my father was drunk, he was a totally different person. And I heard things throughout the years that my family told me that he did. I, I feel for them. I didn't know then why they put up with it. I understand more now, but I didn't know then why, why they allowed it. Why did they still, how could they, how could they still allow this person in their lives to be around? with all the things that he did to them all the things that he put them through how because i i couldn't do it me and him ended up going through stages as i got older now he did come to me when i was like 19 or 20 and did say hey um i apologize for not being there for you and i know that i was a shitty father but then he turned around and called me a hoe because i had my kids in high school and I'm sorry, last time I checked, didn't you have your kids in high school? So it was like a, I felt like he was very two-faced. He would say one thing, but then he would go behind my back and say something else. And it was like that for a very long time. And I couldn't deal with it. I finally got it over my anger and my frustrations with him. I finally just decided to let it go. To me, he was another family member, like a distant cousin or something. And when I would see him, I would say hi, and then I'd just keep on trucking. I didn't try to stop and get to know him. We had no father and daughter relationship whatsoever. 
it was kind of like I was already over it. I didn't care for it at that point in time anymore. I it was it's the weirdest feeling, but it's true. I had more love for my own uncle as a father figure than I did for my own father. And it it was just I said it was just like a weird feeling, but that's just what it was. But I did appreciate my family, and I still do to this day appreciate them trying to trying to convince me that my father loved me or that my father cared. Maybe he did in his own way, but it wasn't enough for me at the time. And I never got it. When I was about 30, I decided to go talk to him. I decided to let him know how I felt. And the reason why was because he was having, I'm not gonna say midlife crisis. I'm gonna say he was starting to want to spend more time. Like he wanted to get to know my children because my children didn't know him. Now I had a stepfather that stepped into my life well, I had several stepfathers, but I have one very memorable stepfather that even to this day, he is in my heart, my dad. But I had one stepfather who came into my life when I was 13 and he made an impressionable, um, you know, he was just, he made a huge impressionable part of my life that I carry with me to this day. He didn't have to step in and take that role, but he did. And I was 13. I was already at this rebel, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. I was fighting against everybody at the time. I had lots of anger about lots of different things. My relationship with my mother, my relationship with my father, or lack of. And so this guy steps into my life, you know, at 13, and he just... picked up my broken pieces as a child and said, I'm going to be your father. And he did. And he was. And he is. And he didn't have to. But he did what he was supposed to do. He went to all my games because I played sports in school and he was there for me when I had children. He raised my children as they were his own grandchildren. He bought me things that I needed. He was there for me during graduation. I mean, he was there for me when he needed to be in my life. And my kids only know him as their papa. So he earned that title, he earned that respect from me in my life. I will forever be grateful because at least I had that. And I remember my biological father, I remember Jose saying, why does, you know, my son at three or four calling me uncle? And I'm like, well, why do you think? Like, you're not a part of his life. You haven't even bought my kids a Christmas present or a birthday present or told them happy birthday. You haven't done anything for my children. Like, they know, well, my daughters knew, they know that you're my biological father, but that's it. So he was starting to speak out about stuff like that towards the family. And I think at the time he also had had my twin brother. So I did see him step up and be a father to them. And I do appreciate that for them because I'm grateful that they didn't have to go through the heartache and the things that I had to go through as a child. So they got a piece, a big piece of that from him. They got an actual father. So God bless them, for real. I don't hate on that at all. So as he's speaking out and I'm hearing from family members like, yeah, your dad's kind of hurt that he didn't call you for, fa that you didn't call him for Father's Day. And I'm like, okay, like, he doesn't do anything for me. He doesn't acknowledge me at all. Like, why after all these years and all the things, the way we act with our relationship, which is non-existent, 
Why would you be surprised? So I decided to go to him and sit down and tell him exactly how I felt, exactly what happened to me as a child and how he made me feel. And it wasn't to bash him. It really wasn't. It was just to make him understand that, hey, you want to be a part of my kids' lives? I don't have a problem with that. But this is why this is the way it is. So I don't understand why you're surprised about it, but I'll go ahead and explain it. And let me go ahead and get this off my chest. Let me tell you how I've been feeling for all these years. And I did. Well, for one, I was upset because he was drunk. He was drunk the entire time while I'm trying to talk to him. And I'm just thinking, can't you just be sober for one moment? Just one time while I give you this serious heart-to-heart -heart talk. For two, he defended himself the entire time. He argued. And I had to calm him down and I had to tell him, I'm not here to bash you. But I don't need you as a daddy today. I needed you as a daddy as a, as a child when I was seven, not when I'm 30. I'm past the point of me wanting a relationship with you. But I will try to do have some kind of bond with you for the sake of my grandchildren, if this is what you want, this is what you were implementing that you wanted, this is what you were trying to say that you wanted with my children. So here's the deal and I made a deal with them. You meet me halfway, I will meet you halfway. But the moment you don't start meeting me halfway, my children don't deserve the heartache of that. I, I, they already had enough heartache in their lives. I didn't need that also with them. So for about two months, everything was good. We talked on the phone. He would call to see how I was doing. I would go over there. I would see him. My daughters even spent the night. I think I even let my son spend the night, which says a lot because I I didn't really trust him yet or, or felt like I could do that, but I did it because I was trying to get my kids to know him and he supposedly wanted to get to know them. I don't really remember exactly what happened, but slowly but surely that started to die away and we went back into old habits. And he smart mouthed off to a few of my family members and they came back and told me. And I was just like, you know what, dude, like I tried. I did what I was supposed to do. I gave it my all. If he wants to continue to run his mouth about me, which I still don't understand why he did it, but it is what it is. I, there's nothing I can do at this point. I did everything I was supposed to do. Um, he's just gonna have to deal with it. That's all that is. My mother calls me one day and she says that her sister, which remember my parents have been divorced since I was two and she says that this, her sister called and Jose showed up at her house drunk. She didn't even recognize him because it had been years that she'd seen him and he starts going off about my mother and me and he said some really horrible mean things things that were totally disrespectful and totally out of line for no reason, just because. And I immediately went to see him, immediately. My mom was so hot, I told her, let me handle it. I immediately that same day showed up at his house and I remember I texted his wife and I said, tell him to be outside right now, I'm on my way. And I get there and he's sitting on the porch and I walk up and he goes, I know why you're here. And I just went off. I told him that he was a piece of shit. I told him that how dare he disrespect my mother. How dare he, how dare he disrespect me. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was really hurt. 
I've done nothing to this person my entire life. I'm your blood. I'm your baby. And this is how you treated me. You treated me like a piece of garbage, like a piece of shit. When you're supposed to have loved me and nourished me and been my daddy. And yet, even growing up, you still had such horrible things to say about me when all I ever did was decide to do what? not acknowledge you anymore i mean it wasn't even that i still spoke to him when i saw him i didn't write him off altogether i still spoke to him i still said hi he talked to me about work i mean for crying out loud like what did i do that was so horrible as your daughter that you had to treat me with such evilness such disrespect. I was really upset and hurt. But I'm gonna tell you what hurt even worse. I voiced what happened between us. And of all the people in our family, I was very close to my family, but I was very close to my grandparents. And me and my grandmother, we've had it out before. We have. Because she took up for my father before. And bad mouthed my mother before. But I thought it was all in the past. I thought that this was something that we had gotten past because I hadn't had an argument or disagreement with my grandmother in forever. And she made me feel bad. She took his side and basically told me I wasn't any better than him, which I thought, how so? How so did you come to that conclusion? Because I haven't done anything to this person. I basically felt like a big fuck you. That's how I felt. Like after all these years, after all this time, I am the outsider of this family. I'm blood, but I don't get treated like blood. At least that's the way I felt. Not only am I the spawn of the most embarrassing person in the family and the most horriblest person in the family but I still get shitted on by my own family and I know not my whole family felt like that I know that and I'm not here to bash anybody because God rest the soul of my grandmother she ended up passing last July which was very close to my father passing in February so they passed very close together but it, it did, it hurt. It hurt me worse than what he did. I could take what he did because he had been doing it for years, but I could not take the person who held our whole family together basically saying a big, a big fuck you. Fuck you and your feelings. And so I stopped going over there, which was a big deal because I was always over there. I was always around my family. I was always doing stuff with them. I was always there. I loved being a part of the family. Even without him, I learned to just come into my own identity and just be there with my aunts and uncles. And they still embraced me and they still embraced my kids. And so, like I said, they didn't treat me any different. I know it wasn't their fault and I don't blame them. But at the time, it's like the leader of the group. My grandmother shunned me. I felt shunned and so I took it personal and I took it so to heart that I basically said a big fuck you to the whole family. That's basically how I felt. And I know that they knew that because later on, my aunt said, I know that's why you stopped coming around because you got into it with Jose, with your father. I honestly, I miss them. 
I didn't I did miss them throughout the years. I missed being a part of the family, but then again, I never really felt like a part of the family. Like I said, I didn't I wasn't close to my cousins and I didn't have that bond and and I was the only adult for so long. My cousins were still really little. I mean, a lot of them are older now and they have kids and stuff. It's a weird feeling. It's just a weird feeling and I don't I'm I don't think they really understood how I felt. But I got over it. I I eventually got over it and I had my own life that I was living. I had my own healing and things that I was going through. Because if you haven't seen my other videos, I really encourage you to go back and watch, especially my eyes and videos. I went through a lot of stuff in my 20s and I went through a very abusive relationship and I went through a lot. So when it was, it was easy for me to cut out my entire family because I was cutting out him with them. I didn't want to go to my aunt's house and see him. I was going to go the fuck off. I didn't want to go to Christmas and pretend to be happy and see him because I didn't want to see him anymore. I, he was toxic. He wasn't a good person and I did not want anything to do with him. I was tired of being shitted on for years. I didn't have to tolerate it. Daddy or not. And he wasn't really my daddy. I had a dad. Last year, before COVID, one of my aunts called. I remember I was out shopping. I was actually about to go have a spa day. And she says that my dad's in the hospital and that she thinks he's gonna pass away. I remember being really shitty to her. I remember saying, I don't care. Why are you calling me? And I could tell she was crying. And she's like, look, Sonia, I'm not saying you have to come. I'm not begging you to come. I'm not saying anything. I'm just letting the whole family know, including you, that he's in the hospital and he, he might be, you know, he might pass away. I didn't need to be told that it was his liver because he already had disease of the liver for years and he was an alcoholic. I remember thinking, yeah, okay, well, I'll see him when I want. And I just hung up and I really didn't plan to go. I didn't plan to go to the hospital. I didn't. I didn't plan to go. I didn't desire to go. I didn't want to go. I didn't plan to go. I went about my day. I finished the rest of my spa day. I had a great time. And I think um, I have a stepbrother. He's not technically a stepbrother, but he is the oldest brother to two of my brothers, the two that I'm close to. And he called and he said, hey, you know, did you hear about dad, da, 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 And I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to tell you, like I told her, I don't care. Get off my phone. I don't remember what it was. I think it was my mother, but I, I now that I think about it, I don't think it was her. I think it was somebody else. Somebody else told me to go to the hospital or I would regret it. And I just thought, okay, you know what? I'll go to the hospital. I don't want to regret this if he does die. And at least that gives me to go through by. So the next day I went to the hospital and he was at Parkland. I remember when I saw him, he looked really bad. And after talking to the nurses and listening to him and listening to my aunt, I knew he was gonna die. I knew he wasn't leaving the hospital. And I thought, even though he didn't deserve it, 
I needed to make peace for myself. I did. And I took some days off and I sat up there with him and we talked and it was literally like we never stopped talking. What got to me was when I heard that he was saved and he had got baptized. I don't care why he did it. I don't care that he did it at the last minute. I don't care that touched my heart because of what I have been through and how God has changed my life and for what he's done for me. And I started to feel guilty. I started to think like, wow, I missed a really important moment in his life because that affects his afterlife. And I harbored all this anger for no reason when I could have just let it go and I didn't. And now, and now my father is about to pass. I have no pictures of my father as an adult of me and him together. The last picture I have of him with us together was when I graduated high school. I don't have any great memories of him. I have wild stories, but I have nothing to reference. I can't say, oh yeah, me and my dad, we had this great time. This one time I went to the movies, this one time I went to dinner. I don't have that. And I couldn't help but feel guilty because maybe at some point as an adult, I could have. And now I, I won't ever get it. And I feel like I wasted so much time being angry. I watched a lot of people pass away in my life. Two of the most closest people to my heart passed away. My favorite uncle, when I was 11, and my grandfather, but I was like 23. Even with our shitty relationship, I was not prepared to watch my father pass away. And he did. And I literally sat there and watched him. The most amazing part for me though, that I did take in was I saw how my family pulled together. I told you they're they're very tight family so I remember the feeling of the moment of it just being us all the aunts and the uncles his siblings I mean his sisters and his brothers and their children and us saying goodbye to him and it was so private and we all cried we were all just crying, but as a unit, as a unit. And at that moment, I couldn't help but feel grateful 
to have them there because we got to board together and we got to be each other straight. I would never forget that. And I was thankful for them for sure, for that. To have them. This year was my second year without him for Father's Day and, and his birthday. Even though I didn't ever celebrate any of those things with him. He still crossed my mind because I wasted so many years not that now when I wanted it the most I can't have it. It put a lot of things in perspective for me. It told me to not harbor my anger to not hold a grudge because something can happen to anybody. And that person cannot be here tomorrow and you will feel so much guilt because they will have gone and you will not have said what you needed to say. At least I'm grateful that at least he heard me out when I was 30. At least I can say that. And at least I had a few moments, even if it was just a few days with him in the hospital before he passed, at least I got that. So that brings me comfort, it does. But now more than ever, it just made me pull farther away from my family. Not because again, I don't love my family, but because If I thought I was an outsider before, I really felt like one well, now. Now I'm to go to a family function and everybody has their parents and mine's is not there. They have more memories with him than I do. Maybe one day I will be able to go and reconcile. I'm not even going to say reconcile because there's no hard feelings between me and them. I know they don't harbor feelings, bad feelings towards me, and I don't with them either. I really don't. We'll say reunite. Maybe one day I will be able to go and reunite with my family as a whole, but at the same time, they're also still very much broken. Because again, they lost the leader of the pack, you know, my grandmother. I really didn't get to go and speak to her privately before she passed. I was actually very surprised when she passed. I wasn't expecting that. I know they said that she had got sick, but I wasn't expecting it. And I sure wasn't expecting it to happen so fast. And I know if it's hard for me, I could just imagine how hard it was for, for them. I know their lives completely changed over there. And what I do, I guess for me, it's hard for me. I guess you could say I want to hold on to what I do. Because it's not like that anymore. I hope that somebody gets something out of this, out of this story. I wanted to tell it because I had wanted to talk about it for a very long time. My lack of having a father did definitely play a huge role in my life of how I am and the decisions that I made as an adult, for sure. And they do with a lot of people. But I don't know if this helps anybody. Of course, I'm always out there to help with in any way that I can with my life experiences. I've had a lot of life experiences, so 
I have so much to tell because I'm still standing where I am today. And then that's what really matters. But I, what also brings me comfort is one day I'll get to see him again, for sure. We will be together again one day and he will be healthy and healed. And that's great to know. But thank you for those who listened, and I really hope that, like I said, this brings some kind of clarity wherever that may be, or um, if you yourself have daddy issues, and because what I do want to say is my brother, I have a brother who didn't go see my dad in the hospital before he passed, and I begged him, I begged him so hard, and he refused and when my father passed and he showed up at the funeral he lost his shit and that's exactly why I wanted him to go up there before he passed because I didn't want to be that person and I didn't want him to be that person and, and I know that it ate him up I don't know if he still thinks about it but I know it ate him up I guess you could say that's one of the reasons why I'm telling the story because I did later on meet a few people who were like, oh, well, you know, F my parents because they did this and this to me. And I'm like, no, you can't do that to them. Like, you can't. You're going to regret it. Trust me. And so I guess that's one of the reasons why I want to tell my story. Bring some, some you know, some advice to you. If you can make amends, if you're willing to make amends, I would try. Because you don't know how long they're going to be here. But anyway, thank you for listening. And again, I'm so sorry that I couldn't get this video out on Father's Day. I was trying, but my weekends can sometimes get super busy and I just couldn't. Don't forget to... Um, hit like and subscribe, also the notification bell in case, um, for when I drop my other videos. I will be doing another tea time very soon because I do have something that I want to talk about for sure. Um, but until then, I will see you guys next time and don't forget to love yourselves because you are all you have. Thanks. Bye.